Welcome everyone. This is the seventh part of the electron microscopy lectures and in this uh, part we will learn about the electron lenses. So let's uh, summarize what happened until uh, this lecture. Uh, we basically learned about the general structure of the electron microscope, why do we need it and how do we use it. And uh, in the last uh, few lectures, I was comparing the different uh, electron guns and uh, their purposes and uh, their lifetime and, and so on. Uh, so at this point, mm, we know how to generate the electron beam, which is needed to, to the imaging. But we don't really know what happens uh, to the electron beam after it leaves the uh, electron gun, the source. So in this lecture we will uh, tackle that question. But uh, before that uh, let's go through some uh, very simple comparison. So the generation of the image is quite uh, similar uh, to the light optical microscopes. So basically what you have is you have a beam of uh, particles and instead of photons now you have uh, electrons and uh, then you have lenses to manipulate the image and in light optical microscopy you have like glass or uh, plastic lenses but in uh, electron uh, microscopes you have uh, magnets so basically you have electromagnets so coils which generate some sort of uh, electromagnetic field and that uh, field is uh, interacting with the electron beam and uh, due to the interaction you can manipulate the beam and uh, form it or shape it to the requirements for example to change the magnification or change the beam current and uh, so on and so on so the main difference uh, between the two uh, like imaging processes is that uh, the type of lenses so you have like a physical lens if we can say so so the in the case of the light optical microscopy the uh, beam of the photons is actually passing through the material but in the case of the electromag Magnetic uh, lenses, so in electron microscopes, the electron beam is not passing through any kind of material, it goes across vacuum. It uh, just passes th through the uh, magnetic field which is generated by uh, coils, electromagnetic coils. So, this is one of the big differences, and then uh, we can think about how the magnification is achieved. In light uh, optical microscopy, you have to like physically change the uh, structure of your uh, light optical microscope. So basically you are switching between lenses or eyepieces to change the magnification of the, of the image. But in the electron microscope, you are just uh, changing the focal length of the lenses by changing the current which is passing through them. So that's like, in uh, theory, it's, it's more simple. And then uh, one interesting thing between the optical properties of these two systems is that uh, the depth of field of the light optical microscopes is quite small while the electron microscopes uh, provide very wide depth of field. So if you look at this image here, you can see that uh, this is, let's say, a rough uh, surface. So here we have the zero distance and this is some kind of uh, the distance from the, from the surface. And uh, if you look at this surface from this direction uh, with a light optical microscope, and you set your focal point uh, somewhere, uh, let's say here, then you might see, let's say, this kind of thickness uh, as a sharp area, but uh, above this area or below this area, so towards these directions, uh, you will see a blurry image because of the depth, uh, because of the shallow depth of field. On the other hand, with electron microscope, uh, you can see the wall area. In, in principle, 
based on different kind of settings, these distances can even be centimeters uh, high and uh, you can still see them uh, sharp everywhere. So that's uh, a very important difference. Uh, another difference is not directly related to the lenses, but uh, a very important thing is that uh, electron microscopes require vacuum due to the uh, scattering, basically. So you know that the electrons can scatter on the gas molecules uh, of the air, for example, or any types of uh, gases. So this scattering hinders the electron beam to keep the same, uh, let's say, thickness or spot size. So if you start from the source, which is here, you have this spot size and then you have the air molecules everywhere, then this spot size will be yeah, not uniform and then the electrons will be scattered and at the surface of the specimen you will have some blurry spot I if you can even reach uh, the surface with the original uh, beam. And uh, of course for light optical microscope you don't need vacuum. And uh, the need of vacuum will also limit the specimens that you can put in your microscope and uh, also like the the materials, but that's more like the fifth point which I wrote here. So in electron microscopes you are aiming for uh, let's say conductive um, materials in, on the first hand. You can use uh, non-conductive uh, materials as well, but either you use some special technique or you have to coat the specimens with some conductive material usually some carbon layer or gold layer is applied on the surface of the specimens but uh, in light optical microscope you can look at uh, any surfaces basically uh, you can even put something liquid based uh, things in it but uh, generally in electron microscopes you cannot really do that so this is just a short summary so let's take a closer look uh, at the lenses. So this is a very, very uh, simplified uh, picture of an electron microscope. So we have the electron gun, uh, which creates the electrons by uh, different principles. And then the anode basically pulls out and accelerates the electrons towards the specimen. And then this uh, electron beam just goes through a set of lenses the main two groups called condenser lenses and uh, objective lenses. I just uh, drew one of each, but uh, sometimes you have uh, several stages of these things. And then uh, also there are some other like magnetic optics, for example, for, for the scanning and, and so on, for uh, correcting for different kind of optical errors, because these lenses also have optical errors. So these are just the main two things which we are going to check in this lecture. And then uh, finally you reach the surface of the specimen. So what you have here is that uh, these condenser and objective lens. So the condenser and the objective lens are used to demagnify the electron image uh, formed at crossover. So we have a source which is, uh, let's say, a tip of your uh, field emission gun or the tip of the uh, tungsten filament. And then you have this kind of uh, cylinder around it, which is, so this is the gun. And then this is this uh, uh, Wienhalt uh, cylinder. And then, uh, of course, you have the anode. I just draw it like this. And then the electron just uh, continues its uh, path downstairs. So when you have this kind of structure, then of course the electron beam is not just a single line, but it's a sort of a spread out line and it's like uh, uh, diverges and converges. And you have one uh, like uh, converging point somewhere in the middle of the anode or something like this. So at, at this point, that point. And this point is called crossover. In my previous lecture, one of the previous lecture, uh, I made a better drawing of this.
but basically we form an image here in the crossover and this image is like manipulated by these two lenses up here so this guy and this guy and uh, that is like demagnified why because at the crossover uh, this uh, spot or this image is let's say roughly around uh, 25 to 100 micrometer but if you check uh, nowadays microscopes then if you go down to the specimen and check what's the spot size of the electron beam then you will find that uh, nowadays these microscopes can let's say provide some spot size between one uh, nanometer to one micrometer uh, let's call it spot size so then uh, you see that uh, yeah if you divide these two numbers then you get quite a large uh, magnification so that's uh, what we do with these lenses and then uh, we also know that the uh, condenser lens determines the current and the objective lens uh, determines the final probe size so uh, what you or what we do here is that uh, we change the current which is passing through the condenser lens and that will of course change the magnetic field uh, in, in this area so that is basically the H so the magnetic field and uh, by doing so we can uh, determine the current. Uh, in a later slide I will show you how this works but uh, this is what, what we have here and then also we can use um, apertures either this side or the exiting side uh, before or after the lenses so this is basically to cut off uh, some of the uh, scattered or diffracted electrons and we just narrow down uh, the electron beam so we basically get rid of uh, the electrons which are like too much scattered and we just have some uh, narrower beam as you can see it uh, in this uh, sketch and uh, that's very good because then the next uh, stage of the lens will get like let's say a finer uh, part of the electrons so we, we need apertures as well so then uh, in the objective lens after like let's say setting the current and some other parameters with the condenser lens uh, we have another like a slightly diverged uh, beam that's maybe again cut down by a second set of apertures and then uh, this objective lens will focus the beam into uh, a spot so that spot will be actually the spot down on the specimen and also it will provide further set uh, further uh, demagnification so uh, we will finally reach this uh, number here and then uh, yeah as I drew it uh, previously either before or after we have some aperture to uh, control the beam but you have to remember that uh, if you apply up, uh, an aperture that will just uh, remove some electrons so the final uh, beam current uh, will be actually reduced so let's take a look at, uh, at an electromagnetic lens uh, and then here you can see a cutaway uh, of, of this lens basically and uh, what what you can see here is uh, that we have an iron core so basically this part which I tried to like shade this is an iron core and inside this iron core uh, you have the copper coils so basically these are like the individual uh, copper wires uh, these circles which are running uh, round and round in this uh, core and uh, these are the windings of the coil and what you can see here uh, there is a small gap and that's where uh, let's say like that the magnetic field sort of escapes so in this gap uh, we will have like different uh, magnetic fields uh, generated 
And uh, what, what we can do here is, uh, as I said, we can manipulate the magnetic field by changing the current inside uh, these copper um, wires. So we increase the, the current and that will also increase the magnetic field. And uh, as you increase the magnetic field, you change the characteristics of the, of the electron beam passing through this, uh, let's say, gap area. And uh, that's very important because that's how we uh, manipulate the, the beam by uh, changing the current. And uh, what we have to know about this thing is that uh, we know that, for example, after exiting the lens, we have a focal point somewhere. And that's basically the crossing point of the beam after the beam exiting the lens. And we can manipulate this uh, uh, focal length by uh, manipulating the strength of the lens, which is basically the magnetic uh, strength of the magnetic field inside the lens. So if you increase the strength or the magnetic field, then the focal length will be like shorter. And uh, also, if you change the strength, that uh, also determines the the magnification of the original image, which uh, yeah comes from the source up here. And uh, if we take a look at this uh, magnetic field, then uh, we can like split it up into two components. So we have these, uh, let's say, equipotential lines, uh, sort of. So along these lines, the magnetic field is the same. And then at each point, you have a radial and axial uh, component. As you can see, the radial component is uh, here. It's perpendicular to the z-axis. The z-axis is running like this. So that's basically the path of the uh, electron beam. And then, uh, of course, the z component of the magnetic field will be parallel to this axis. And if it just check this, I tried to draw the two components. So as you can see in the center of the gap, so here in this along this line, uh, the HZ, so the Z component of the uh, magnetic field is maximum. And then uh, the radial component of this uh, magnetic field, so HR, is just maximum at the two pole pieces. So basically, uh, either at this pole here or, or this pole here. So that's what we, what we see here. And then the, this is just like the general um, description of the magnetic lens. So we can like discuss it in a more um, complex way or more uh, difficult way. But I think this is just the basic information what we need uh, in order to understand how this works. So we have basically two cylinders. I try to draw it down in a better way uh, from a 3D view, sort of. So you have these Uh, cylinders embedded in each other and then uh, between these two cylinder walls so basically here uh, the wires are running around in here and uh, maybe here there is a gap which is this guy here and then there will be that's the point where the beam is being manipulated. So in, in that gap, we have this uh, sort of uh, electromagnetic field, and that what manipulates the electron beam. So let's take a look at this uh, column in a more uh, complex way. So we start from the source, uh, which is up here. And at that point, we have D0 and alpha 0. So basically, the D0 represents the image at the crossover. And the alpha 0 is basically uh, also part of the image, which 
uh, represents the divergence. So I just write it down. So you can see that it uh, diverges here. And then uh, this uh, flat line here is the condenser lens. So the beam crosses the condenser lens, which focuses uh, the image to a diameter di, which can be found here, and the uh, divergence angle alpha i. So basically, you can see it here. And then uh, here, you can calculate some uh, things, such as the demagnification. And that is basically uh, the ratio between the S0 and SI. <coughs> and once we have the demagnification, we can also, uh, so we obtain the M. And then after having the M, uh, we can uh, calculate the DI, so the image at uh, this point. And that is basically the D0 divided by the demagnification. And with the same rule, we can also calculate the alpha i, which is the divergence at uh, the di point. And that is basically the alpha 0, so the initial divergence, uh, times uh, the demagnification. And then uh, we can also apply this uh, general, I think, Gauss uh, rule uh, from the geometrical optics. So uh, basically, uh, the inverse of these distances will give us the inverse of the focal distance uh, for the condenser lens. And also, uh, this rule is very good because we can sort of uh, add these rules. So if we calculate the same thing for the uh, next stage, so for example for the objective lens, or if there is another condenser lens, then for that part, uh, we can uh, like add up these things and uh, at the end uh, the product of these uh, things will give us the final uh, focal distance. So now uh, we are here, we have the alpha i, we have the di, so we are, we passed the condenser lens and then uh, what we know and uh, I started to discuss this previously that uh, this equation also tells us that if we increase the current passing through the lens, so we increase the strength of the lens, uh, that can be seen from the SI, then we will decrease the F prime, so the focal distance. By decreasing the SI, uh, we increase the M, so the demagnification, and also with this we increase the alpha i, so we will increase the divergence. So if you increase the current once more, by increasing the current in this uh, system with the condenser lens, uh, we decrease the focal distance and uh, we increase the demagnification, but with that we also increase the uh, divergence. So the more you magnify, uh, the more this distance basically travels up, but at the same time, this angle here opens up more. And uh, you have more, like, yeah, diverged uh, electron beam, and that's maybe not desired. So since we have this huge divergence, we can use an aperture before the objective lens, which is uh, placed here. And then uh, that will basically cut off, let's say, this part of the diverged uh, electrons. And then we just keep, yeah, this part inside. And then uh, the electron goes, or the electron beam goes into the objective lens down here. And then the electrons are focused again. And then uh, the spot size is also changed. So now we have a D spot size uh, at the specimen and uh, also the diver uh, divergence angle here can be seen uh, that's also changed and now uh, the demagnification again is basically given by this so s prime uh, divided by s so the uh, demagnification of this stage if you remember previously we calculated the diver uh, the demagnification of this stage 
So basically this can be like M and this can be M2. And then also the final spot size is basically the initial spot size. The, so the spot size or image size up here uh, divided by the uh, product of the two demagnifications. So MC, MO. So maybe this is MC and MO, it's better. Uh, and that's, that gives us this spot size. So as you can see that uh, it's not, not too difficult and uh, you can see that uh, the demagnification and the focal distances can be calculated by basically just considering these distances between each uh, steps. So that's quite uh, convenient for us. So we can also take a closer look on the condenser lens and the objective lens as well. So this is uh, somewhat similar to the previous image, but uh, I try to highlight uh, some different uh, details. So as we know that uh, the condenser and the objective lens together determines the final probe current. So basically the probe current uh, which will end up on the surface of the specimen. And uh, we also know uh, from the rules that uh, as we increase the demagnification uh, from the condenser lens, so uh, basically from the first uh, step of our uh, lens uh, system, then we increase the alpha i. And the alpha i is this outer part of the, of the beam, basically, or the angle of this uh, kind of divergence of the beam and uh, that that is increased and how we can like regulate that is that we are uh, introducing an aperture to our system so that will introduce also another angle which is alpha a we can call it uh, for example an aperture angle and that is basically the angle uh, for the electrons which are actually entering the objective lens here so that's what we have and in fact by using the ratio of these two angles uh, and using the uh, beam current uh, we can uh, determine the current which is passing through the objective lens so here in the in one of the last uh, steps of our lens uh, system and and that's a, a very useful uh, detail for us we also know that with increasing strength of the condenser, so basically running more current through the uh, condenser coil, uh, the final beam current decreases. And uh, let's compare these uh, two cases, so these two drawings together, because there are some small differences that I want to uh, show you. So in the case one, we see that the beam is focused, so most of the beam goes through the aperture. Uh, in other words, this means that uh, alpha i is relatively small, so there is only a small part which is being excluded from the uh, beam that uh, will pass through the objective lens. And then in the case 2, uh, we increase this alpha i, so there is a larger uh, amount of electrons which are being excluded and uh, this is achieved by uh, introducing a shorter f prime so what happens here is that we basically uh, check this distance which is the f prime and compare it to this one here this f prime and we see that we decreased uh, that uh, distance and then uh, as i said if we decrease the distance, so we increase uh, the demagnification, the then uh, this results in a smaller portion of electrons which are passing through the aperture, so here, because more is getting excluded by the aperture. And uh, we also have a smaller di, so di basically is here. Uh, then in case one here, because we, we change the demagnification and uh, also we lose some current uh, in the final beam or in the final probe 
because we excluded so much electrons here. So th this is what we have in the uh, case two. And uh, finally, we can uh, calculate some details for the uh, beam, basically. We can uh, write down a few you know, typical values or a few typical formulas. So basically, this is the current density which is available in the final spot, so on the surface of the specimen. And that is basically uh, pi times uh, beta, which is the beam brightness, uh, times the alpha squared. So this is basically just some uh, geometrical uh, terms and some terms which are uh, related to the uh, quality of the electron uh, beam. And then if we know the current density, we can also measure or calculate the current. And again, some uh, geometrical factors uh, times the current density. So this is how we get the current in the spot. And uh, the image size, finally, that uses uh, both the brightness and the current in the spot and uh, some other factors and that's what we get uh, or basically the spot size or, or the image size on the surface of uh, the specimen. So that's basically what we have at the end. And uh, you can find these uh, formulas uh, a bit more explained in one of my uh, previous videos. So I explained those things, what is the brightness, how we can manipulate the brightness by changing some uh, details of the source and so on. So you can find those there, but here I just uh, wrote down again all these formulas to remind you. So basically these are the very easy and simplified uh, details of the lens which are used in the electron microscopes. I did not go into details too much but if you want to know anything more, just uh, ask me in the comments. And I hope that uh, this video was useful to, for you and you learned something. And in the next video I'm going to talk about the aberrations in the electron uh, optics. So similarly to the light optics, uh, we have some kind of aberrations such as chromatic aberration or stigmatism. Uh, in the electron optics as well. So I will try to discuss those, how they are uh, corrected and uh, what are these uh, aberrations in reality and how they affect our uh, specimen, uh, our image and, and so on and so on. So see you in the next video.